I grew up in Edmonton, Alberta, there was a lot of publicity about bush pilots. We all had ideas that we'd like to learn to fly and be a bush pilot in the Canadian North. And when the war started, all the commercial pilots got a telegram from the Minister of Defense inviting us to come into the Air Force as pilot officers. So for the first four years, I was involved with the Joint Air Training Plan. Russ Bannock is Canada's second highest World War II ace, with an official total of 25 and a half enemy aircraft destroyed, including an impressive 19 German V-1 flying bombs. When I was chief instructor at Arnprior uh, in 1943, a mosquito was brought over from England and Geoffrey de Havilland, the chief test pilot of de Havilland, brought this over. They did a demonstration in Ottawa. I was so impressed with it. I thought that's what I want to do from then on. My objective is to get overseas and fly mosquitoes. In June 1944, he got his wish when he was posted to 418 Squadron in southern England. That was uh, 418 Squadron. Uh, we had Hairless Joe. Underneath the nose art, the ground crew would paint the swastikas. My airplane in 418 Squadron, they had painted on these V-1 flying bombs that I shot down. But I had over 2,000 hours of instructing before I even got overseas. I'd had a lot of flying experience. At the time, Germany had begun their second Battle of Britain, using their V-1 rockets. The V-1s, they, they were really a small airplane. I mean, one they were built as a flying bomb, and in the nose they had almost 2,000 pounds of explosive, the warhead. And then they had a, an engine that was a, a pulse jet engine. It went on and off, on and off, but it could propel the V-1 up to 400 miles an hour. So they launched these from the coast, leveled out at about between 500 and 1,000 feet, headed towards London. When they ran out of fuel, it would glide it down and explode. They eventually launched several thousand of these. We were allocated a section of the English Channel, and we had to have a couple of aircraft on there all night long. They used Spitfires in the daytime, mosquitoes at night. Our squadron shot down around 80 or so in a short time. I shot down 19 of them myself. They were flying along at 400 miles an hour. First of all, you had to catch them. And we tried early on, when they first appeared from 2,000 feet diving, and we couldn't catch them. We eventually patrolled at 10,000 feet. And as soon as we saw them launch, we would dive down on them. That gave us about 30 seconds or so to shoot them down. Uh, we could get the mosquito up to about 430, 440 miles an hour which was enough to overtake them. And the first thing we learned was bad to shoot them down from the rear because uh, they exploded with uh, bits and pieces in it. Mosquito engines are uh, liquid cooled. There's a radiator in the leading edge. And if you've got one of these pieces in the radiator, in a matter of seconds, you lost your coolant and the engine would seize and catch fire. So we Learn to shoot at them from an angle, which means deflection shooting. They would send a wave of, say, 10 or 12 airplanes. So you'd shoot one down, but then you'd have to climb back up to 10,000 feet. And then you start looking, you'd see another bunch coming out. So I probably shot one down in each wave of 10 or 12 airplanes. And then uh, I was out of ammunition at that point. In fact, I th remember the last one, I had no cannon shells up, but I shot it down with the four machine guns. <laughs> I actually shot down a 20th, but that was not recorded until after the war. The, I shot down a, a Henkel 111. It was one of the Henkels carrying a V-1 under the wing. This happened to be one of those aircraft. I was not aware of it until got a record of it uh, three or four years after the war. In October 1944, he was promoted to wing commander 
and soon after reassigned to 406 Squadron. And the reason that I was given that job, they were a straight night fighter squadron in England. Their job was to shoot down German bombers coming over England. My job was to convert them from a straight night fighter squadron into a night intruder squadron. You know, I built up a fair amount of experience and the people usually look up to the guy who's able to do that, particularly the chasing these V-1 flying bombs. You know, once you've shot, shot down a couple of aircraft, you know, they want to know how you did it and so on, so you could pass on that experience. In fact, uh, the squadron didn't have a very good reputation and when the air marshal commanding the group that came in and said I had a month to convert this, to fix up the squadron or they were going to disband it. Well, I was successful and, and we used it for the next six months to the end of the war. The only time that I had a tough time getting out of a situation is that uh, doing an intruder trip into southern France I got into a cumulus nimbus cloud. It's violent. There's air currents going up and down and you had a hard time controlling the aircraft. And you're pummeled with hail. In fact, when I got back from that trip, yeah, the hail had peeled all the paint off the airplane. At the end of the war, Bannock was recruited by de Havilland, Canada. I didn't lose the mosquito business because uh, my first job as de Havilland in Canada was chief test pilot. Uh, the Chinese government bought the remaining 200 mosquitoes which were built at the end of the line and they uh, sent over, uh, I think it was 25 Chinese pilots to be trained on them. Uh, so that was my job the first winter I was there was to train these pilots and it wasn't easy because first of all, they couldn't speak English, but that was one of my first jobs at the Havilland, apart from testing. We were uh, beginning the Beaver, the Chipmunk. We were overhauling Lancasters for the Air Force, so I had to fly all these airplanes. The test pilot, you also do a lot of demonstration work, selling Beavers, and then we developed the Otter and the Caribou, different aircraft. So I was eventually became Vice President Sales. Actually, the first flight in the Beaver, we had a problem with the engine, and I had to actually come in and glide in with power off. I was lucky working for an aircraft company. I could continue flying. I've had a, a fun life, as I've been generally my life has involved aviation, and it's been, in my lifetime there's been terrific developments in aviation, so I've been lucky to be near that. Russ Bannock has received a Distinguished Service Order, two Distinguished Flying Crosses, the Order of Ontario, the French Legion of Honor, and has been inducted into Canada's Aviation Hall of Fame.